Hello everyone, welcome back to Code Enzyme. This is the 11th video of the series, Graph Algorithms for Competitive Programming. And in this video, we are going to discuss a technique called binary lifting. Now before starting this video, I would like you to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you are actually finding this series helpful, kindly tell me in the comments because, because I'm actually getting very less views for this playlist and I don't know if I should continue this or not. So kindly tell me in the comments if it is actually helping. Now, now let's see, uh, basically uh, what is binary lifting? Let's say we have a node A, okay, and it is pointing to node B, and it is pointing to node C, then it is further pointing to node uh, E, R, D, then E, then F. So we have total of six nodes, okay. And I ask you something like, what is the third ancestor of F? And you have to, tell, and then what you will do is you will first go to F. Then you will say, okay, we go one step, two step, three step before, and then you will see C, and it you will tell me that, okay, uh, the ancestor was C. Now, this is only, only applicable if there is only one, one outgoing edge for every node. Right. So, uh, so if you have something like this, and even if you have something like a cycle, so let's say A points to B, then it points to C, then it points to E, uh, then it points to points to A again, and ask and I ask you what is the one hundred ancestor of uh, uh, ancestor of A, then you will you have to go hundred times in this cycle reverse order, and then you will tell me that okay this was the ancestor in big O of n time, right? And we want to reduce this time using binary, so using this technique called binary lifting to log in uh, time complexity. Okay, so what we actually do for such uh, problems is, uh, let's say we have something like A is pointing to B, is pointing to C, is pointing to D, and actually I think I will take numbers because that will make more make it more easy. So let's say one is pointing to two, and uh, two is pointing to three, three is pointing to four, four is pointing to five and 5 is pointing to 6 okay so i mean we want to reduce the time from big o of n to big o of log n or maybe better so what we are going to do is uh, since that there is this term called binary and we know that every number can be written in uh, in base 2 so some form of 1 1 0 1 something like that right uh, so what we can do is we can store we can store the 2 to the power ith uh, ancestor or the next node so if the question is about ancestors you have to store the 2 to the power ith ancestor if the question is about the uh, next node uh, then you have to store the uh, next node uh, 2 to the power ith next node for every node in a table okay so let me create a table. Let's say we have first for node 1, then for node 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. So we have a table like this. Let's say for 2 raised to power 0. So for 2 raised to power 0, the next element is 2, right? So the 2 raised to power 0th, uh, so the first next element is 2 uh, for 1, then for 2 it is 3, then th for 3 it is 4, for 4 it is 5, for 5 it is 6, and for 6 it, we have minus 1. Um, by minus 1, I mean there is no node after this, okay? Let's say what is 2 raised to power first of this. Now by looking at this diagram, I can say it is equals to 1 and 2, okay? Right, like that. But, uh, okay, let's say it is equals to 3, right? But there is also one thing that I can calculate this using, let's say uh, this table is called S. So I can say S of i, j is equals to S of S of i uh, j minus 1 uh, j minus 1 so this is the formula for calculating it so basically for uh, s of uh, for i equals to 1 it will be equals to s of i uh, i minus i j minus 1 which is equals to 2 and s of 2 of j minus 1 which is 3 so here we will have 2 first i'm going to 2 then i'm going to 3 so like that we have a 3 here then for 2 we, we go to 3 and then we go to 4 in the same row so it is equals to 4. For 4 we go to 5, 
टू मोर नोट सो सिक्स एंड देन माइनस वन एंड माइनस वन ओके लेट से फॉर टू रेज टू पावर टू सो वी गो टू थ्री देन इन द सेम रो फॉर थ्री इट इज इक्व टू फाइव राइट वन वन टू वन टू थ्री फोर सो लाइट इट वी हैव फाइव फॉर टू वी गो टू फोर एंड इन दिस सेम रो फॉर फोर विच इज इक्वल टू सिक्स फॉर फाइव वी गो टू फाइव इन दिस सेम रो विच इज इक्वल टू माइनस वन माइनस वन माइनस वन माइनस वन लेट्स ऑल्सो गो फॉर वन मोर रो डेट इज इक्वल टू सिक्स देन वी गो टू सिक्स सॉरी फाइव फॉर फाइव वी गो हेयर आई थिंक इट विल बी गोज टू माइनस वन देन फॉर टू वी गो टू सिक्स एंड फॉर सिक्स इन द सेम रो वी हैव माइनस वन सो देर विल बी ऑल माइनस वन नो and you will realize that after uh, this row is actually uh, what is log 2 of 6 uh, it is almost equals to i think 2 uh, 2 uh, right so there will be there will be only log uh, it is equals to n cross log uh, log 2 n uh, n cross log 2 n table so you have to make this table first and this is the formula for making this table and once you have made this table you can query this uh, in log in time so if i ask you what is the 13th uh, i think i i should take something easy let's say what is the uh, what is the fifth uh, next element after 2 so since 5 is 101 1, first i will go four steps ahead using this step so from 2 i can go here so i arrive at 6 1 2 3 4 and then from 6 since this is a zero i will skip it then from 6 i will go to 6 and then go one step so minus 1 so like that i i can query it in log in time i hope you were able to understand this if you uh, if you think it is too fast you can rewind the video a couple of minutes before and then you can try watching it again now let's try to solve a problem using this concept and the uh, and the problem name is planet queries 1 let's read the problem statement you are playing a game consisting of n planets Each planet has a teleporter to another planet. Now, clearly, it is said in the question that every planet has only one teleporter, a teleporter to another planet, and this problem is only applicable when there is only one uh, outgoing node from every node. I think I discussed that here. So there is only one outgoing node for an uh, outgoing edge for every node. So we have this now. Uh, we want to process Q queries of the form. When you begin on planet X, you travel through K teleporters. Which planet will you reach? And since K n is 10 to the power 5, we want to solve this. Q is 10 to the power 5. We want to solve it in log in time for every query. Now, I think you already know what we are going to do. So let's try to code this up very quickly. Okay. So first, I'm going to say okay. Let's make the let's use the template and I will remove the unnecessary comments first. Let's make a graph. Uh, int n c uh, n comma q c n n comma q right uh, i also need the log value so let's say int uh, m is equals to log 2 of uh, n i think it will fit in the integer bound is this long long or uh, it, it is giving me a double but it will be stored in this right so let's say plus 1 just to make sure that it doesn't uh, go out of the range Okay, now since I now I want to create my sparse table, right? So I will say int uh, sparse table. I forgot to mention that this table that we created here it is called a sparse table. Okay, now uh, the I can make a vector of ints or even a vector of vector int or I can make a a, a matrix like that, a uh, um, double array, two D array, uh, whatever you wish you can make it. But uh, I am going for vectors sparse table of uh, n elements then vector int m elements and initially we have minus 1 in in that okay so i initialize it like that now okay we have this now what i can say is uh, the first row i think uh, if you read the input format you are given the uh, okay the second line contains for each planet the destination of the teleporter okay so if i am on planet uh, let's say for i in range 1 if i am on planet 1 where will i reach so i can say sparse table Uh, let's make it a vector of n plus one and m plus one. Okay, sparse table of i comma zero. So the first uh, next element after i, uh, this is what I have to see in right. So I did it like this. Now, now let's try to initialize the sparse table. Now, when I was um, talking about this, 
for every log value i have to traverse so my outer loop will be of the log value so let's say for i in range m and then for j in range uh, 1 to n right i can say sparse table of j comma i is equals to sparse table what i minus 1 uh, i mean uh, sparse table of sparse table of uh, it will be equals to j i minus 1 and i minus 1 uh, this i minus 1 will be of the outer side okay so this is actually the same thing that i wrote here i just inter interchange the ij part because uh, I think you can see that if I write I here, it will mean the same thing. And actually, I should start. Uh, I should actually start from one and go till m, because in here I actually initialize it for i equal to zero, and this might give me a segmentation fault if I don't do that. Now, while q minus one is, I have to take two integers as input. Uh, what was the input format? Okay, so input format is we have to take. Uh, we are starting from planet X and we are traveling through k teleporters. So let's say int x and k scene x and k then now uh, what is the log 2 of 2 into 10 to the power 5 because k is going k is going to 10 to the power 9 actually ok so we have to travel till 10 to the power, log 2 of 10 to the power 9 let's see what is log 2 of 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 it is I think I missed a 0 it is approximately 29 so we can reverse travel for 30 okay so uh, so now we want to jump from planet x k times for that i can either do it in reverse order or i can even do it in forward order it doesn't matter so let's go from 0 till 30 uh, or maybe we can go till 31 uh, so basically we have to go till m actually and now if k and 1 less than less than i basically if the bit ith bit of k is set then i want to get the 2 raised to power ith parent of x so let's initialize my answer as x and i can say answer is equals to sparse table the parent of answer the 2 raised to power ith parent of answer basically now i can print my answer value let's try to run this and see if it works now this is actually optimal but it still might give you a time limit exceeded uh, can you actually point out why so and if you were able to figure it out why it will give you a tle uh, kindly write down in the comments now what happens is uh, in c++ i mean in every language there is a system to traverse in the uh, 2d uh, two dimensional arrays okay so mm -hmm. what happens in c++ we actually prefer that the number of uh, rows should be less than the number of columns so i should actually do it in reverse order so i can make uh, the number of the length of the columns large and make the length of the rows smaller for that i can uh, i have to switch these and i think it should pass all the test cases now i j so i minus 1 will come here j will come here and uh, i think i minus 1 i minus 1 j and uh, actually i think uh, this should go on the outer loop here and i minus 1 will come here yeah and now i can say i comma answer let's see if it works okay so our solution still gets accepted and now let's try to submit this and see if it is working okay so our solution got accepted and i hope you were able to understand uh, if you still want to know why uh, uh, it will give you a daily if you don't switch these values actually there is something called uh, the cache system in C which makes it faster if you travel traverse the uh, uh, matrix row wise so it is optimal in C++ that you reduce the number of rows and you can uh, read this nice blog on GFG about this problem uh, like that so that will uh, remove your time constraint and your solution will get, get accepted uh, I hope you were able to understand this and write uh, and now you have solved it. So if you did kindly like this video, subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys next time. Thank you.